Claire Carey. She's a teacher from Santa Barbara High School. She's been teaching there for three years. She teaches biology as well as AP biology. Um, in 2004, she researched with R Jana Jones in the Safinia lab here in the MRL, investigating the effects of L-DOPA on neurofilaments. Today, she'll be speaking about the curriculum she has designed around disease-oriented collaborative research projects. Thank you. Claire? Thank you. Um, uh, I am, my name is Claire Carey. I teach at Santa Barbara High School. And uh, the project that I am going to present to you today is um, called Disease-Oriented uh, or Disease Collaborative Research Projects. They're based on the California state standards, and it's designed for my high school classes. Um, I'm going to first tell you a little bit about the RET uh, UCSB program. The RET program is a two-year research education program for secondary teachers run by the Materials Research Lab at UCSB. And the first summer, teachers will work for six weeks collaboratively with the MRL um, researchers in areas that focus on physics and biology and chemistry. Uh, the second summer, teachers will work for four weeks, um, tran basically translating their research into um, investigative lab projects for their teaching uh, and then they were also refine their projects for publication and presentation like we're doing today. Um, the goal of the, the main goal of the projects is to have students um, collect scientific data, be able to present their data and make um, accurate conclusions about the data that they're doing in their investigations. So my research that I did with um, during the two summer Two summer project. Um, I worked with Jana Jones in the in Professor Safinia's lab, and we worked on the problems that L-DOPA, um, a Parkinson's drug that is used a lot, um, has on Parkinson's patients. We studied the intermolecular um, react, uh, interactions between the neural filaments that make up the nerve cell axons of. Um, we were speci specifically looking at um, bovine spinal cord, so we actually blended up. Um, cow spinal cord into um, a nice little mixture. Um, once we got that mixture together, we basically purified um, the, bo the spinal cord um, and we used gel electrophoresis. So this is a um, picture of the gel electrophoresis um, setup. And the, the way that the P proteins are purified. Um, the gel electrophoresis separates the proteins into um, by m molecular weight and also by electronegativity. So they're separated by um, by size, and they'll show these um, they'll show up in little banding patterns. And so the the different um, the different neural filaments were separated um, into high, medium, and low weights. We also used X-ray diffraction once we um, purified the, the neurofilaments and electron microscopy to study the interactions between the neurofilaments and the sidearms. Uh, we found that the repulsive and attractive interactions between the sidearms were really critical in forming the, ha forming the structure of the neurofilaments. And understanding how these neurofilaments work together helped us l understand a little bit more how um, L-DOPA is working on the filaments of the spinal, of, of nerve cells and why they maybe fail to, fail, may, why it maybe fails to work after a, a period of time. So we just basically we're learning more about how these filaments interact with each other. Um, for my curriculum project, now we don't work with nanoscale um, um, 
experiments set in the high school um, in the high school classroom. So I chose to focus on the genetics of Parkinson's disease, and um, also on the research that I did through scientific journals. So I combined the themes of researching diseases, researching treatments, and conducting labs into four research projects based on the main four units that I cover in my biology classroom. So the California state standards were actually all covered in these four different projects throughout the year. Uh, the first one, um, the cancer research project that I did, um, covers the state standards for the, the cell, um, standard one, and also the national standards. Uh, the genetic disorder project covers the state standards um, on genetics, standards two, three, and two, three, four, and five, and also the national standards. <coughs> The Viral Bacterial Parasitic Fungal Infection Project, really long word there, um, is, focuses on uh, the California state standards in cells, uh, genetics, evolution, and ecology, mm -hmm. as well as the national standards on um, genetics and bio biological evolution and behavioral organisms. The final one, the Organ Tissue Failure Research Project, um, is basically focused on California state standards on physiology, 9 and 10, and the national standards. So those are all, my, all four of my projects that I, that I worked on. Um, to understand a little bit of background about who the students that I'm teaching, this is, a, this is for college prep biology class. Um, our textbook was by Holt Reinhardt and, Winst Holt Reinhardt and Winston. My class sizes are about, usually about 35. Um, we may have up to about eight ELL students in a classroom of varying levels, maybe um, up to five, or at least five students with IEPs in a classroom that size. And just for your knowledge, I have one class that is um, a, a, an academy art class. It's called, called um, VADA, Visual Arts and Design Academy. So I focus a lot on the arts as well. My learning objectives for, this pro for these projects are that students will apply their, um, the science standards to real life epidemiological applications, um, that they'll be able to research and also present their findings to their peers, that they'll, their, their, their student research will support the standards and the academic content that I'm teaching them, and also that the students read and understand primary source literature, the, the scientific journals that they're researching on. Um, so in order to support uh, their learning and um, teaching strategies, I focused on the Sadai teaching strategies, the specially designed academic inst instruction in English. Uh, and I really like this quote about Sadai strategies. Sadai re research shows that students are more successful at retaining new information if they're able to demonstrate real-world applications. And I. I held on to this because I really found that that's true in the high school classroom, that students really uh, identify more of the curriculum if they have a real-world application that they can uh, link to, that li link their knowledge to. Um, so the, the, the Sadai strategies that I focused on were into, through, and beyond, higher-level thinking skills, group work, uh, using multiple intelligences, intelligences and teaching them to be self-directed learners through the group projects. So if you'd like to access um, any of this material digitally or learn more about the program, you can use this website. And I'll come back to this website later on in the program so you can write it down. <coughs> um, so again, I'm going to kind of recap the different projects that I worked on. Um, these projects are introduced at the beginning of my curriculum units. So they'll have uh, basically some prior knowledge that, they can, that the students can fall back on as they're learning the material. Um, the cancer research is presented in the form of an illustrated poster. And this um, coordinates with my cell unit. Um, the genetic disorder research is presented in the form of a PowerPoint. And this coordinates with my genetics unit. The infection re research project is presented in the form of a life cycle comic strip. And I'll show you examples of all of these. This is from my evolution unit. And the organ tissue failure research is pre presented in the form of a 3D book slash video. And that's for my human physiology unit. Um, just to give you an idea of the resources and materials that I used um, for the 
cancer research, I used, we used cancer cell slides. Um, I also used karyotype slides when I went through um, my genetics um, unit and they got to look at the chromosomes that are in each cell and to determine if there is some sort of genetic mutation in one of the chromosomes. Um, we also used gel electrophoresis for my genetics unit and this is the um, DNA technology technique that I used in um, my own research. Um, bacteria slides for the infection um, research project and sphagmometers and um, um, stethoscopes for, for the physiology unit. Okay, and the last thing is just to use, um, using journal articles um, for, for them to do their own research. And I wanted to make sure that they're accessible to the, to the high, high, at the high school level, not too hard for them to read. Um, the formal assessments that I graded them on were the grading rubrics for the presentations, the oral exams, uh, quizzes on the content, and labs. The informal assessments were things like the topic sheets that they turned into me, um, the research worksheets, the journal article worksheets, oral presentation checklists, the peer review worksheets, um, quick writes on the content. So those are more informal assessments that I did along the way. Um, each of these four projects has the same, have the same formal and informal assessments, and um, each project uh, serves a, as a template, basically. So you'll s I'll go through each four of these projects. They're basically identical to each other except for the main focus of the project. And I'll go through the first one more in depth. This is the Cancer Research Poster Project. Um, this is my lesson plan. Um, ideally, it should take 10 school days, but the way I did it is I, in, I interspersed it throughout my curriculum. So I didn't necessarily go through um, 10 days all in a row. And you notice that the time length um, is not always a whole class period. So you don't have to take 10 whole days out of your curriculum to do any of these. Um, I interspersed them within the curriculum that I taught throughout the class and sometimes left um, these little 15 minute or 10 minute segments mm -hmm. till the end and that's kind of a um, way for them to end the class. Um, so when I, in each day, I, the first day when I introduced the project, um, I would give them kind of a, a big idea of what I want them to, how I want them to present the information at the very end. So for the cancer research pro poster project that focuses on the cell, um, I gave them an idea of some lung cancer prevention poster ideas. So I, the idea was that I wanted them to present a poster advertising some sort of prevention for cancer. So you have Joe Chemo and um, <laughs> Jackie Chan um, fighting, trying to fight lung cancer. Um, then I would give them the handout um, on, the, on the cancer up on the cancer poster project. You, you have this in your packet, so I believe it's the yellow, the first yellow uh, pages. And this is the same, this is really the same for all four of the projects. Basically, I always give them the disease, a description of the disease, and then websites they can go to that are really good websites. Um, most of them are from the government, so they aren't going to um, dis disappear all of a sudden on them. And they are it also teaches is a good opportunity to um, teach your students how to find good legitimate websites and not go to um, random links. And um, what I wanted to emphasize to them each time is I want them to choose a project that they're either they either identify with because maybe they're so they know somebody who has this type of cancer or they're just intrigued by it. So. There are, I gave about 30 ideas and they, they're welcome to choose another idea if they want to. Um, the same day they have to choose their partner, so they will choose four partners and choose their cancer and all they have to do to turn into me is their, their topic that they want to research and then their partner. And I write it down on a sheet that I have and I don't want them to duplicate that at all throughout the classes. So it's first come, first serve. And you'll see for the, for the other ones, there ends up being like this mad rush for the really popular, um, popular topics. 
On day two, uh, that's when we go to the computer lab. So we do research in the computer lab, and that group of four breaks up into pairs. So they pair up and go to their computers, research on those websites that I already gave them, and they use research sheets um, that I provide them. And this is basically um, a minimized version of their grading rubric, and they're to record the website that they're on, answer as many questions as they can from the grading rubric that I will use to grade them, and then move on to the next research site and try to fill in the rest of that rubric. Um, ideally, they'll hopefully go to at least four different websites that day, and then their other partners will do the same. The third day, they will meet together just for about 10 minutes to um, kind of self-evaluate where they got with their two partner groups. So the two partners will come back together and uh, to make a group of four, and they'll kind of self-evaluate themselves, um, grading where they, where they think they are so far. And they can also um, collect all their research together um, and synthesize it together, recording the sites that they went to. Uh, on day four, they're supposed to brainstorm their topic, um, work together collaboratively on their groups, and have time to work on their posters. So I give them a little bit more time to work together on that. The fifth day, they just meet again and reevaluate themselves on the self evaluation um, sheet. On the sixth day, they work, this is an, a whole class day that I devote to basically assigning poster, whoops. Sorry, assigning poster responsibilities. Um, and for assigning poster responsibilities, I give them um, a job worksheet. And they basically have to divide their group up into four different partners. So the reason I wanted to do this is so that each partner is responsible for a certain job. So partner one is responsible for the title and the definition and the symptoms on the poster. Um, all the way down to partner four, who's responsible for getting the frequency in the population and the information about the article on that poster. Uh, and they delegate this themselves. And if they need a little bit of help, I come and help them choose who's going to do what. But this is more to just help, keep, um, help them be more responsible themselves and not w waiting to the last minute. The rest of the time um, during this class, I focus on them go I focus on them going through an article that I've chosen for them. So for each project that I do, they're, um, I'm going to give them I give them an article that they can research on. Uh, in this, uh, for the fir very first one, this is not a real, true scientific article. Uh, this is actually from uh, the uh, can um, Hmm, we'll come back. I'll come back to where this came. This came from the Cancer Society um, website, and this each article that we go through, I use um, a DRTA, um, a directed reading thinking activity, and it's a SAI strategy. So I'll at the end after I explain all these projects, I'll kind of go through each um, each DRTA in more detail on how to do it. Um, for this one, this open activity. They basically just try to fill in the blanks of this article. And the whole class has the same article, but they're broken up into their little, their, their small groups. And during that time, during that whole class time, I kind of make it into a, a contest to see who can get the most fill in the blanks correct. On the seventh day, they meet in their groups and they show the rough draft of the poster to me. And that's a quick check. I go around and see, make sure that they do have. Um, their rough draft of their poster started. Uh, this also, all these checks factor into their grade for this project. On the eighth day, they meet in group, their group for just problem solving, um, checking in with their group, taking about 10 minutes to, to see where they are. And on the ninth day, um, I give them a poster checklist. And this is just to finalize their presentation. They go through and actually check off whether they've have their title, their definition, their symptoms, all the things that I'm going to be grading them on. So it's a way to, self, again, so check themselves and self-evaluate where they are, uh, as well as I'm walking around making sure they're, they're on track. Um, the benefit of this is it's, it 
helps them, makes it really explicit what they have to have to have an A on the project. There are no questions about what they need. Um, and actually, when I did this project, instead of having 10 minutes the day before the presentation, I actually let them have the whole period to f finish up a lot of the poster because it ended up, it was hard for them to do it on their own time in a group of four. So I actually ended up giving, giving them a little bit more time in class. On the last day for the cancer research poster project, um, what, I, what we did is we put up all the posters on the walls and I had them kind of do a round robin grading peer review time. So each person, each group had their poster up and in, fi in increments of five minutes, one person from their poster would stand by the poster and kind of introduce it. And all the other students are walking around grading the posters. So all the students have peer review poster grading sheets that they have to fill in. They have to at least grade six. And at the very bottom, I like them to give feedback, what they liked about the presentation or what the group could improve on. So they have to do six um, and that, that also um, accounts into their grade. And then in the meantime, I'm walking around as well, grading them on their cancer poster, on their, on their cancer poster, and getting some just initial grading done. And it took me about 45 minutes to get one class done. So um, the, the grading rubric actually makes grading these posters a lot faster than, than I thought it would take. So some, I'm going to show you just a couple of student examples. Um, this is, this group did skin cancer, so their advertisement was splatter on that SPF. So they were advertising, um, uh, advertising sunscreen and encouraging people to be um, s sun smart, it says. Uh, another one is leukemia. And you'll notice here that says there is no way of preventing, uh, no prevention for leukemia. So we had to kind of be flexible with some of these. They didn't have an advertisement for prevention of leukemia, um, but they did give all the information about leukemia and how, how it um, affects the body. Um, the next project, so that's the cell unit. Now the next project is the genetics unit. And this is focusing on genetic disorders. Again, um, we do the same lesson plan. I introduce the project, give them the handouts on the genetic, the genetic disorders, and I really tried to pick ones that were both familiar to them. They may have a grandparent who has Alzheimer's, but maybe they don't, never heard of angel man syndrome, or maybe they never heard of um, uh, cat's cry syndrome, or one of my favorite ones that I thought was really intriguing. Um, was maple syrup urine disease, a disease that makes your urine smell like maple syrup. Who knew? <laughs> so uh, there often is a, a fight for who can get you know, certain diseases. And it actually, this actually does take about 15 minutes or less because there's a mad rush for choosing the, the um, most popular genetic disorder. And uh, there's also um, uh, disorders um, for chromosomal disorders for sex, like the XXY disorder, Klinefelter. So um, those are the real pop popular ones. Uh, the difference here is the final presentation is going to be a PowerPoint uh, just on the genetic disorder. And I'll show you an example of that. And also the article time. So when they break up and research their article, they work with a DRTA worksheet. And this is the DRTA that I gave them. It's um, basically a predicting reading and checking predicting activity where they focus on just looking at the title of the article or the title of the journal that the article is found in and really looking at some cues, some visual cues that they can get a lot of information about before they even get into reading the article. And then they go back and check their predictions. I'll talk about a little that those DRTAs a little bit more. Oh, whoops. Okay. <laughs> um, so the, I'll show you a presentation that one of my students did, um, or a group of them did. Um, they did Alzheimer's disease. And for each slide, they had to do, on their checklist, I have them do um, a type of slide for each, um, each little grading rubric that I have. So they had to have a slide on the, what the description of the disease. They had to have a slide on the symptoms of the disease. 
Um, they had to have a slide on the causes of the disease. Um, some pictures that showed, um, that kind of described how the disease was, was affecting the body, whether it's inherited or not. And this was um, actually a really interesting one because um, they found, their research said that Alzheimer's was not inherited. And I thought that was very interesting. And we got to talk about um, the fact that not all of these genetic disorders um, there, there is some dis discrep discrepancy in whether they are inherited all the time or not. So we had a chance of, to kind of take an opportunity to, to, to debate about that a little bit. Um, and we talked about treatments as well, uh, the diagnosis for Alzheimer's, who's most likely to get it, and then, of course, the article at the very end. So they do read a scientific article as the class, um, in their own individual groups, and they have to give us the, the bibliography for that. Um, the next project that focuses on my um, evolution unit mainly, um, focuses on um, bacterial, viral, parasitic, and fungal infections. Um, this one is really fun because I introduce it by showing a parasite video that is um, from the BBC. It's really dramatic and really gross. So they already are just totally grossed out and excited to do <laughs> this research. And I want them to focus on how these organisms evolve to survive in, um, in most, mostly it's um, people's bodies and how they d d uh, evolve to be parasitic in their bodies. Um, so the, the different t topics that are pretty interesting are African sleeping sickness, um, body lice, the bot fly larva that burrows into the skin, um, also the kandiro fish that swims up the urethra uh, so <laughs> with little barbs. So I actually show a video that has all of this stuff in here and they are so excited to get to that research. Um, the main differences here are that uh, the final presentation um, is supposed to be somewhat of like a comic uh, comic either life cycle, like this is the elephantiasis life cycle, or it can be a comic strip life cycle of um, actually in little, sl in little uh, slides. Uh, also the article time, the, when they actually went, go through their individual article on their disease, is um, the the DRTA that I use that I use for this is gist, and that's the idea is that they just write down the gist of the article within 20 words or less, and I'll get into a little bit more of how that works. The last project that I oh I'm sorry let me go back sorry about that. Um, ooh, I didn't show you any examples. Um, so some examples <coughs> from my class uh, were, was the HIV virus. And you can see they showed the life cycle of the HIV virus going into the person's body and replicating. Um, another one that I really loved was the mad cow disease. And um, you'll love this cartoon. So you can see the life cycle. It starts here with the cow actually eating a cow milkshake that is of a, an infected cow. <laughs> and then um, the infected prions get into the cow brain and make Swiss cheese of the brain, basically. Step four, the cow dies. And then that cow eventually becomes the new cow milkshake. So the cycle continues on. Um, so, and they, they have information on their article and all the steps of how that whole life cycle continues. Um, I thought that was a really cute one. And the last one I have for you is um, elephantiasis. So this is um, basically the life cycle here is a mosquito has the filarial worms inside of its body. It is, bites this little person here and the filarial worms get inside um, the blood cells and just start to replicate many, many times. So here it is, it's a boy. <laughs> um, they replicate inside the body and the, the filarial worms get inside the lymph system and um, mainly, the, most of the time, they affect the, the larger extremities like legs and they fill up the lymph system and clog it up so that the, their legs turn into the size of like tree trunks. Um, this is, don't worry, this usually happens in Africa and um, uh, 
it, and it travels through the mosquito. So it shows the life cycle of, of elephantiasis. So there's some um, student examples from that project. The last project is focused on human physiology. And um, th this is basically focusing on organ slash tissue failure. And my, my big idea for this project is that they would present kind of either a 3D book or a 3D video where they're zooming in um, into the body to where this is, uh, where the infection is or the disorder is. So this is a website that I found and the idea is that they will be either showing a PowerPoint or an animation program where they zoom further and further into the body. And this website, website um, shows the power of t powers of 10 zooming in from the universe all the way to Florida all the way down to a proton inside a, an oak leaf. Um, so that's what I, the idea that I want them to convey is going in from maybe a person having a heart attack and holding onto their arm, zooming into the heart, the ventricles in the atrium, and, and the blood vessels, into their blood cells, and then finally getting into where that little clog is inside the heart. And that will, of course, give them information into the anatomy of the heart and more about whatever they choose to research on. So it goes all this is really cool website that shows them all the way going down to the nucleus, all the way down to the proton inside the, the leaf. I thought they could also do this in the form, if they don't have access to computers, they could also do this in the form of just a flip book and make, making, um, trying to give the idea that you're zooming further, further uh, into the into the human body. There's also a book that's called Zoom, and that's where I originally got this idea. So there's a picture book that's called Zoom that um, also gives the same idea. And the article that they do in um, for this project is the DRTA for this project is called Request, and it, we kind of make it into a game. It's basically um, they read uh, the first paragraph of the article, and then they ask who, what, when, where, how, why questions to their classmates. And they uh, ask those questions without looking back at the article and keep score in their little groups. And they kind of make a game out of being able to understand the material that they're going through. So obviously there's um, going to be some misconceptions um, that are come along the way as I go through all these different units. Um, hopefully, with all of these little formal and informal assessments, some of those misconceptions will come up, and I can address them either within their small groups, or if it's a whole group misconception, I can address those again as a whole group. So these research projects, in conclusion, really did enhance my, my teaching. The students were more engaged in the information, especially when it came to things like the cell that they can't necessarily see every day. And um, doing things like cancer made it more real, had a real world application to something that might be a little bit harder to understand and not see every day. They had more ownership over the curriculum units. and. Uh, they also, it also gave them a base of prior knowledge that they could, as we keep, kept learning about, let's say, the cell, they could go back and think, oh yeah, that cell's growing out of control, that's cancer, and they had a base of prior knowledge. So the first um, DRTA I want to go through quickly with you um, are, is the OPEN, and that's from the, again from the first project, the Cancer Research Project. So how this OPEN DRTA works is the group of four would read through their article and fill in the words and the blanks that sound like they fit. And this reading strategy is used to help them pay attention to the meaning of the article and encourages them to use vocabulary words they've already learned from their research. So this is from the American Cancer Society, Early Lifestyle Choices in Cancer, and the article is actually in your binder. Uh, and how this works is we, they would actually be doing this in their groups, um, but for for, for, these, for this purpose here and pre, um, while we're presenting, I'm just going to have you respond um, by filling in the blanks. And it can be a synonym or maybe it would be the exact correct word. Um, so I'm going to read the, I'm going to read this, just this one little section and you're going to respond by filling in the blank when I come up to that word. 
Um, so myth, what someone does as a young adult has little impact on their chances of getting cancer, cancer later in life. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Catching on. Um, blank teens. Good. And I would take most also. So syn as long as they get the synonyms, they're more engaged, they're trying to think of synonyms, which is another good practice for them to be understanding the English language more. Um, many teens and adults have a, a feeling of immortality that bad things o only happen to other people. people. Uh, each teen who tries smoking, smoking. smoking. Oh. you guys are good, um, <laughs> cigarettes, for example, is convinced that he or she can quit smoking any time, that it's the other kids or adults who become addicted. addicted to nicotine for years, not them. So you guys get the idea. It gets a little bit harder as they go on. Um, but this is the first one, the first DRTA that we do, that we do together as a class. And the next one is on the genetics disorder project. And this is called predicting. So the idea is this is their first real um, scientific journal article. So it's a lot harder. Um, but I'm trying to get them to just understand that they can learn a lot just by looking at the cues in the article. So the first question is, um, what is the title of this article? Again, and this is another, their group of four, and they have their own specific article to their own disease. Uh, what journal is the article found in? What do you predict the article is about just by looking at the title, graphics, the first sentence? Um, what, questions, what question or questions do you predict the article will try to answer? Just trying to emphasize that they can learn a lot from a hard article just by looking at the, the basics. Then they read the article, write down any new information that they found, and then they check their predictions to see if their predictions were correct. So they list the predictions that were correct about the article. The next DRTA that they have for the infection research project is called GIST. Um, again, they'll have a specific article in their group of four and this is particular to their disease that they chose. And they read each paragraph or two paragraphs, however many you want them to read at a time. And then they summarize that paragraph or two paragraphs in 20 words or less. And this actually becomes a real challenge after a while because they get a lot of information trying to fit it into just 20 words. Um, so they're focusing on the gist or the main idea. And they continue reading the article, paragraph at a time or more adding or taking away words to, um, to create their summary. And so they fill each time, there's a, the worksheet is in your, uh, in your binders, that they have to keep repeating um, that summary over and over again and really refining the gist of the article. The last DRTA um, that, that we do for the organ tissue failure research project is called Request. Um, and this is really kind of a game that you could uh, the students could play within their group of four or with you, and they could quiz you if you want. Um, in this case, since they have particular articles, I had them quiz each other. So they read at to a, maybe the first paragraph, and then they think of a question, a who, what, when, where, why, or how question. And they actually write them um, in these little shapes, so a who question. And then they would go back and quiz somebody in their group after they read that paragraph. When everyone's finished reading, um, they ask their questions, and then they continue reading each section and stopping to write questions and ask um, their group members if, if they can get those questions. And they keep score. They have a scorekeeper who, who records all the points. So ideally, there are four, um, there are four people in that project, and they are keeping, we're keeping track of who got the points. So if you would like to access this material digitally or learn more about the RIT program, um, I have the website up there for you to write down. Also, the Powers of 10 animation that I showed you on the hyperlink to the website, uh, that website is up there. Um, and I just want to thank you for coming today, and thank you for listening to my presentation. I'll take any questions you have. Oh, sorry. Wait for the mic. Yeah, just a uh, just a question on the content of some of their presentations. Um, I'm always a little cautious when I see a lot of information that 
obviously contains vocabulary that's beyond what I would expect them to know. Right. And how do you work with that to make sure that they're not obviously just downloading stuff and pasting it on post boards? Exactly. I, I really tried, that's a great question, um, trying to help them um, not just cut and paste stuff is a, is a real um, and ended up being a real problem. So I kind of made a blanket rule that they can't to not um, not type what they wrote on there. The first poster, um, I I didn't wasn't I didn't realize that that would be so much of a problem. But the rest of them, I just had them hand write out their stuff so that they were trying to summarize what they got off the websites into their own words. That's a, but I did run into that as a big as a as a problem. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, I just I have a couple questions just like on clarifying things. Is that okay mm -hmm. to ask that? Okay, of course. Um, I wrote them down on each of the <laughs> sections. Oh, for the articles, do you pick all of them out, or do you ever have them bring them in? I I actually for the for the, all the individual ones like the um, the can the sorry the genetics disorder one and the infection. I actually did research the articles and find good articles that I thought they could read themselves. Um, so that I have, I m end up making binders of, of all these articles in alphabetical order, order so I could um, give them to them. So that's, and that's what I, a lot of what I did during the summer. So it, that does take a while to accumulate all those so, articles. So you created uh, all these articles for each genetic disease or cancer and then came up with the corresponding DRTA or N the the way that the D that's why I made kind of generic DRTA so oh, okay. each of their articles are is individual to the project but the DRTAs are pretty um, generic except okay. for the first one so for the open uh, the, yeah, uh, the open okay. is on cancer and they all have the same one that's the only one that's really specific and I just had them do the same same article for cancer and then for the genetic disorder research PowerPoint, the ones that like Alzheimer's and autism, where there's not, I don't know, there's some ideas that they're related to, you know, different genes on different chromosomes and stuff. But so, do you let them just do things that I may could be inherited but haven't been, you know, it's it's X linked or you know, it's something that's right. So yeah. So some known. of the some of the um, some of the um, ideas that I put that I put on their handouts. Are, have not totally been proven whether they're gen genetically linked or not. So that's that's when it got into a good kind of class discussion about there is um, that's that's the exciting thing about scientific research and so those particular groups that had those types of disorders that weren't totally proven that they're genetic. Um, I the Alzheimer's that was a good example and then we I specifically talked to those groups about the t two different, you know, the different ideas that were out there. Okay. So I did include them. Can I hug the microphone more? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then, um, oh, for the infection research comic strip, do they know at that point what the difference between a, fung a fungal disease is versus a bacterial versus a viral? I mean, do you, because the life cycle is very... And right. So do they, I mean, because that, I would think that would take a lot of background knowledge. Do they know at that point, or is it just something that you help them through? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the order in which the, my curriculum goes is cells, then genetics, then ev ecology and evolution. So they know about cells. They know about bacterial cells. Um, they don't know about fungal yeah, cells. I don't so know either. <coughs> Excuse me. So they don't... Um, I, we go into that later on, so no, we just kind of they have to figure that out on their own. Okay. And then the last question <coughs> is the <coughs> computer or the Zoom in site. That was just an example to show them what that would look like, but there's no computer <coughs> program to. I, I didn't fully. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. There's no um, computer program that helps them do that. Do you ever have them do it on a PowerPoint, like? Yeah, I haven't done that one yet. That's the one I haven't done yet. Oh, okay. So you just created it. Okay. So I either like you don't have to talk. <laughs> <coughs> it could be. That's why I had the different ideas so far that they could do a, a flip book okay. or PowerPoint and just go through each slide. But I know I have some kids that are really advanced in yeah. animation and that I bet they could figure out a way. So I wish I had a 
That was the best idea that I came up with. So yeah. I want to see what yeah. they'll come up with. They'll yeah. probably come they up with something like totally better. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. I want to say how fabulous these plans are oh. and how easy Thank it's you. going to be for me to try to apply these with all your, your it's wonderful. Thank you. Good. So Thank glad you. I'm here this morning. Um, I also have a couple questions. Um, <coughs> so on the first one, you only had, you gave them access to the computers for just one day. So they had to collect all of the research on cancers on the, on, on the one day. The on, yeah, on one day. And I actually, for the cancer research project, I actually went, we went back another day. So I did add another day for the infection research project. Um, I did only give them one day and so I kind of uh, you might need to vary them for the different projects how much research you want them to do I imagine by that's the second one they're more experienced they're and more, get a little more they focused. get the pattern and mm -hmm. so they're better at, at getting that research um, there's a bunch of assessments here do you by any chance have a checklist of all of them in one spot I didn't see that in the slide or in the binder you know, all the, a, which yeah. ones they have to have well you I mean you have all the you had the a PowerPoint of all your assessments, but do you have a checklist where you're keeping track of all those grades, or you were doing that more? No, I was actually, no, I didn't do anything like that. I, I actually just incorporated it into their class grade. So it was just like a homework grade. If they, um, if they got that uh, assessment done, then it was just like 10 points for their total grade. Okay, so you just did in your own, you did, yeah. there's no log that you kept for it, because no. I was going to borrow it if you had one. All right. <laughs> um, the only other question I had was on, I love the, the DRTs. The one on the predicting, there wasn't much room there. Was that the actual form they filled out? So they just had those little four bullets for what they were predicting or what they actually found? or did? Yeah, the, the, the form, and the PowerPoint slide that I showed you was, um, was just Yeah, made, no, the form's in here. The form's in there. Yeah, that's what I actually give them. Okay. Um, so I just want them to predict a few ideas. And then the reading, you'll notice there aren't that many bullet points either. Um, that's what I was surprised about, yeah. The, it actually was, it ended up being okay because they had a really hard time understanding what the articles were saying. Um, and that's why I chose these DRTAs because it's, that's the purpose of the Sedai strategies is to help them learn more about the English language. It's almost like a foreign language for them to start reading these scientific journals. So for them to actually get information written down was really good. <laughs> so just having a little bit made it easier yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. And then one last question. The video that totally grossed them out and got them completely engaged, do you know the name of that? Could you oh, share that with a, us? That's a good question. I should have remembered that. Um, it's from BBC. It's called... Um, I want to say it's um, Body Snatchers. I think that's the title. Is, do you know? <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's Body Snatchers or, and, and it's from BBC. Um, it's also, the a website you can go to to find that video is www.films.com www.films.com That's what I know the web, and I think it is called Body Snatchers. But it was great and it totally grossed them out and I had to watch it five times and I really I couldn't eat lunch by the I it was it really ends up really grossing you out but it was a perfect intro to just focus and I gave them I, I could have included this too I gave them a worksheet to use while they were watching the video and they had to list down the different parasites and all they had to do was um, say what it, the what the what the parasites um, adaptation is to survival and then explain a circle if it's an endoparasite or an ectoparasite. So get us getting them into the idea of there are parasites inside our body and outside our body and what are their survival adaptation and it really does connect with evolution. So it was a, it was a fabulous way to introduce that idea. They're really excited about it. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.